Mercedes expressed its dissatisfaction with the current technical regulation. The team believes that Formula One has gone the wrong way by being obsessed with the fight against dirty air and not paying attention to other problems, which, in particular, for the third year in a row, lead to the fact that Mercedes has difficulties with the stability of the rear part of the car. The current regulations have been in place for three years now, and for the third consecutive year, we witness the domination of one team. Considering this, questions arise as to whether Formula One has managed to fulfill its task of making the races more exciting and avoiding the dominance of a single team. In this regard, James Allison, the technical director of the Mercedes team, has expressed his opinion. He believes that the dominance of Red Bull is not a flaw in the rules, and other teams need to do a better job. However, he also pointed out that there are important areas that need to be changed to make the races more spectacular. I don't necessarily think that they failed in those terms of one team dominating, because our job is to try and make sure that we can make a good fight of it. But there are things in the regulations that don't serve any of us well. I don't think it's sensible to have cars that hug the ground in the way that these cars hug it. And the idea that you get good racing by controlling wakes while ignoring tires. The whole idea of controlling wakes being something of a tilting at windmills type of challenge, that side of things has been tested to destruction fairly evidently. But Red Bull are doing a good job and the rest of us have a duty to do a better job. I don't think that's the fault of the regulator. In addition, Allison believes that one of the critical aspects of the current generation of cars is how the performance of the floor and diffuser depends on the height of the rear of the car. The Briton notes that the FIA should learn from what has not worked in recent years and not carry it over into future regulations. I don't think there's anything wrong in particular with ground effects floors, but the particular layout of these ones that have a response to rear ride height that is not particularly good for the cars, that isn't something that we should carry into 2026. The FIA is still very much of a mind to place wake management at the top of the tree of everything, sacrificing this stuff, and it'd be helpful if there was more of a balanced approach there. While James Allison's words address general rules and seem aimed at improving competition in Formula One, they hint at what could be the key to the problems faced by Mercedes's cars. When it comes to ground effect cars, the closer they are to the ground, the more downforce they generate. However, it's important not to hit the ground because it can cause the car to bounce and instability in generating downforce. Therefore, the suspension of these cars is crucial. Ideally, you need a platform that keeps the car at the right height above the ground to create a constant, stable downforce. At the same time, the suspension shouldn't be too stiff to make the car comfortable to drive. The new rear suspension of Mercedes was precisely aimed at solving this problem. It was supposed to provide the car with stable positioning relative to the track surface and eliminate issues with the unstable rear end of the car. However, as it has become clear, Mercedes hasn't fully addressed this problem, and the positive feedback from the drivers after pre-season testing has turned into concern and complaints about the unpredictable performance of the car. We're learning about the car, and we just need to find a better compromise here. We're chasing the downforce, but perhaps the downforce isn't worth the losses that the bouncing brings. We've shown really strong pace at points, we went out an FP1 yesterday and we were quickest on the hard tire straight from the get-go, and then it seemingly got slower. In Bahrain, we were really quick on Thursday, and then on Friday, we seemingly got slower. We still need to get on top of it, and maybe we just need to strike a different compromise. All these problems are a continuation of what Mercedes has been struggling with in previous years. Unstable performance, unpredictable day-to-day -day fluctuations, and difficulties in getting the car to do what is expected of it in high-speed corners when it's close to the ground. And perhaps the worst part for Mercedes is that they don't fully understand how to fix this problem. Identifying the source is impossible during wind tunnel tests, and modeling also doesn't yield the necessary results because it shows the presence of downforce where in practice there is none. Therefore, the team is forced to use new approaches and experiment with settings to understand which direction to move in. The chief race engineer of the Mercedes team, Andrew Shovlin, 
hopes that the next Grand Prix will help the team better understand the car and bring them closer to the source of the problem. There's definitely data that we're picking through from Jeddah. We're also looking at data from the Bahrain race, Bahrain test, and we will come up with a plan for how we approach free practice in Melbourne. But it's not just based on what we did in Jeddah. There's a lot of work going on within the aerodynamics department, vehicle dynamics department. We're trying to design some experiments there that will hopefully give us a direction that's good for performance. If the team's expectations are met and such experiments pointed in the right direction, it doesn't mean that Mercedes will soon return to the top. The team believes that their car has a fundamental problem that cannot be fixed simply by adjusting settings. They need time to implement updates, which they don't have. It seems that the current technical regulations have presented Mercedes with a challenge they cannot overcome. Year after year, their cars suffer from similar problems, with no solution in sight. Perhaps only a change in regulations will allow Mercedes to compete for the championship again? Or will they eventually find the truth and make their car competitive? Share your thoughts in the comments.